Hello everyone, welcome to TechTour.com. In this lecture, we'll, we will learn basic timestamp ordering protocol. So in previous lecture, we understood what is timestamp and we also understood that with each database item, we associate two timestamp value. One is, let's say this database item X, then we have two timestamp value. One is read timestamp, okay, and another one is write timestamp. And what is read timestamp? This is the timestamp value of the youngest transaction which has performed read operation over this variable and this is the timestamp value of youngest transaction which has performed write on this variable. Okay. Now in this basic ordering protocol we have two rules. So as we know that if I'm talking about this database item X and whatever operation is being performed on this database item X then if we are performing read operation it will have conflict with only write okay and if I'm performing write operation it can have conflict with read as well as write fine we already understand uh, these conflicting operations okay so when some transaction want to access this database item there may be two reason only one is that this transaction t wants to perform read another one is that transaction wants to perform write okay so in case of read we will have some rule and in case of write we will have some rule so let's start with read as it has only conflict with write okay so we need to check what is the right timestamp of this variable x. So when a transaction t wants to perform some read operation on this variable x, then we need to worry about only write which has been performed so far. Okay. So what we need to check what is the right timestamp of this variable. So now let's see this pseudo code. Here we have we have written that transaction t issues a read x operation that is transaction t wants to perform read on variable x right so what it will do it will first check whether a write timestamp of variable x is greater than the transactions timestamp okay so what will be the transactions timestamp when this transaction t started so let's say it started at 2 right and it has some read timestamp and some write timestamp. So if this write timestamp is let's say 4 which is this condition if write timestamp is greater than timestamp of transaction. So if write timestamp is greater than timestamp of transaction then we abort transaction. We abort this transaction and roll back. Now what does it mean by this condition what do we understand so here you see that we are saying right timestamp of transaction is greater than the timestamp of transaction t1 it means that a transaction let's say I'll write t1 t2 t3 so t1 has timestamp value 2 it has 3 it has 4 and now this is variable x and it has right timestamp equal to 4 right and this condition is true that for this variable x write timestamp is greater than timestamp of this transaction okay I'm assuming t1 here I'm talking about only t okay so it means that a transaction which has arrived later than t1 has modified the value of x okay so here if the timestamp value of this x write timestamp value of x is 4 it means this transaction this transaction has modified the value right and this transaction is this transaction has arrived later than t1 right so this is mean by this condition write timestamp is greater than timestamp of transaction it means that a transaction which has arrived later than this this t has modified the value of this x 
in this case this value of x is of no use and this transaction should roll back right and if this is not true okay if this is not true in that case what will happen in that case it has some value 1 or 2 right so if this is not true then some previous transaction so here 1 let's say this is t0 so some previous transaction has wrote the value of x lately and that's why what we can do this transaction can read the value so it will read the value right and once it has read the value what it will do it has to modify the read timestamp of this x right okay so it will modify the read timestamp of this value x but here you should ask a question that what if the read timestamp value is already greater than timestamp value of this transaction so let's say if read trans timestamp value is also greater than uh, 2 that is let's say it's 4 it means that this transaction has performed last read on this variable x then should we modify this value the answer is no because the idea of timestamp is the idea of timestamp for a variable is that it should store the timestamp of youngest transaction right so here we need to have an extra check that if first it will read okay and now whether it has to modify or not so if it is the youngest transaction if this transaction t is the youngest transaction then it will modify otherwise it will not modify so it will check here read timestamp of x is less than timestamp of t right so if this is true then it will modify the value of read timestamp otherwise it won't modify so i hope i'm clear let me repeat myself so if a transaction t issues a read operation what it will do first we need to check whether write timestamp of this variable x is greater than the timestamp of this transaction t okay if write timestamp is greater than timestamp of this transaction t it means a transaction which arrived later than this t has modified the value of x that means that the value of x which is there in this variable right now is of no use for this transaction and that's why this transaction t will abort and roll back okay and if this is not true then it will read the value and it can also modify the value depending upon if the value has been read by some latest transaction or not okay so if this transaction t is the latest transaction so far to read the value of x then read timestamp will be modified to the timestamp value of this transaction fine so this is first case now second case is that when transaction t issues a write operation now in second case this transaction ti wants to perform a write operation on this variable x okay now as we know it has two timestamp value read timestamp and write timestamp okay and this transaction ti has some timestamp value which is its arrival time okay so its timestamp has some value so now if read timestamp of x this read timestamp this value is greater than the value here let's say I'll call it so if this read timestamp is greater than this value what does it mean it means that some transaction which has started after this ti has performed a read operation that's why it modified the read timestamp okay after performing the read and it updated the value to its own timestamp value and as this value is greater it means that that was that transaction came after this transaction this ti right so let let's have an example i'm saying t1 t2 t3 t4 
now I'll associate some some timestamp value 1 2 3 4 okay now if the read timestamp value and let's say I'm talking about t1 right now so now if read timestamp value is equal to 3 it means this transaction performed last read over this variable x right and if transaction t1 wants to perform a write okay this transaction t1 wants to perform a write then it will see that read timestamp is greater than its timestamp value 1 right as 3 is greater than 1 okay so it will find that read timestamp of that that variable is greater than timestamp of the value of this transaction so this is true similarly if some transaction let's say t4 has performed last write over this variable then here write timestamp will be 4 okay and if this timestamp and if this variable wants to perform a write it will get that write timestamp is greater than its timestamp value fine so this will again again this condition will become true okay so in any case the later transaction has done some read or write okay and in that case this transaction t will abort and roll back right otherwise if this is not true it will perform a write operation and then write timestamp of the value will be updated to the timestamp value of the transaction so for example <coughs> we can take a schedule and see whether this timestamp uh, ordering protocol is able to detect the conflicting operation or not or is able to uh, ensure the serializability or not so to check that let's say we have schedule t1 uh, transaction t1 and t2 which creates a schedule this is r1 then w r1x of course then wx then i have taken a simple schedule here right now you see that this is performing read now while performing read and we have a variable x let's take variable x right now for this timestamp value is 1 and for this it is 2 okay initially the timestamp value for this read timestamp and write timestamp both are equal to 0 fine now now this this is a schedule and transaction t1 is performing write first so we will see that whether this transaction uh, whether this schedule is creating a conflicting op, uh, situation or not so so t1 wants to read this item x or as there is no operation before and it is 0 0 so it will perform a read on this and read timestamp will become now 1 it will modify read time timestamp to 1 okay so the first what was condition for read that whether the read timestamp for this variable is greater than timestamp of this okay so it was false so it will read and update the value of read timestamp now this write operation for transaction t2 to perform this write this will this transaction t2 will check whether this read timestamp is greater than timestamp of this okay this transaction so as read timestamp timestamp is not greater greater than 2 and write timestamp is also less than 2 so this this whole condition i mean this condition is false so it will come here it will perform a write okay and now it will here it will update the write timestamp value to 2. Read has conflict with write operation. So it checks whether write timestamp of variable x is greater than timestamp of transaction ti. Right. So here it is 1. So we will check, keep it 1. So now in this case it will become true because write timestamp is 2 and transaction one timestamp value is one okay 
so this will become true that's why this transaction t1 will abort okay this will be this will abort and roll back fine now you can simply check that here you have two transaction if you directly want to check the conflict serializability you can see that we have two uh, transactions so we will take two nodes now this read to write is a conflict so one to two there will be an edge there will be an edge and this write to read there is a conflict so two to one there will be an edge so this is not conflict serializable and we have seen that using this timestamp ordering protocol also we can ensure that these schedule are not permitted right so the important point or we should note that timestamp ordering protocol ensures conflict serializability okay and as you can see that we have abort and transactions roll back so there may be a situation there may be a special case where a particular transaction keep on aborting and that's why it can cause starvation for that transaction okay so this was all about basic timestamp ordering protocol now we have a small improvement over what we have learned and that is called thomas wright rule so we will learn thomas wright rule in next lecture